Hi guys, Hi. welcome back to another Juicy Reacts. Thanks for clicking on the video today. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you're enjoying the content, it really helps us yes. out. We're road to 100K on this one. And if you're interested in our daily vlogging channel, the Juicy Vlog, then please head over there and subscribe for loads of Philippines content from our travel yes. days. And if you do want to send us any from our travel days, like travel is over, for hopefully now. it's just on pause. Yeah. Um, if you want to send us anything to react to, please send us a message on Instagram. Our Instagram handles are in the description. Yes. So this one is, it's been highly, highly requested. It's been all over our messages by a ton of you guys. So we're gonna watch it today. I'm pretty, we don't know much about this. The no title idea. of the video is An Open Door Jewish Rescue in the Philippines Extended Trailer. I think it's a documentary that someone's made. Okay, cool. And this is kind of the trailer, but a lot of you guys have asked us to watch this. So okay. let's watch it together. Let's yeah. get straight in. Three, Three two, two, one. <laughs> would go to the park nearby and we would, by the time we were five, we would see benches that would say, dogs and Jews not allowed. And I couldn't quite understand what all this was about. When Hitler came to power in 1933, I was two years old. And um, my father being the chairman of the Socialist Party in Cologne, which was one of the two parties that opposed the Nazis, uh, the Communist Party being the other one, was accused by the Nazis of having murdered two Nazis. In my mind, concentration camp, I knew it was a terrible place and we would most likely be killed there. So it was fear, terrific These fear. These are all survivors. And um, we were, so we started hiding. We were told that there was basically a man in government who was an anti-Semite and who was very antagonistic towards the Jews. We take the train home and very often there were kids waiting for us, uh, older kids, uh, as we came out of the train station and they started running after us eight kids and throwing stones at us and calling us dirty Jews. So I became a very fast runner. In 1937, um, a group of Nazis came to the door with a German shepherd and uh, wanted Scary. to see about the Jewish books. And my dad had quite a library. The dog frightened me terribly. It was a big police dog. And they took the books. There were a fair number amount of Jews living in that apartment house. They took all these books, took them into the backyard of the apartment building, and there was a whole pyre that was built and, and basically burned all those books. Oh, my God. They took my, the German citizenship away from my mother, my father, and myself. So now we were stateless. My dad was arrested and was arrested in the Breslau. So hard to imagine what this would have been like. My mother told me that, uh, told my brother and I that uh, my dad was away on a trip, on a, on a business trip. Really never divulged that he was, had been arrested. And, uh, but cried bitterly, and we couldn't understand why she was crying. My father was told by the Nazis that he had to sell, get rid of all his houses. He could only take a hundred marks out. 
with the implementation of the Nuremberg Laws and depriving all German Jews of their German citizenship, this that enabled then the, the government to confiscate businesses, to confiscate homes, to appropriate all their assets, it was not a physical extermination, but it was a social annihilation because it, it annihilated their place in the social fabric of German society and treated them as non gratis, as foreign enemies living among society. Awful. My father's family so hard left to imagine. Germany in 1939. Imagine just being so it was eight late. Years old. And in fact, yeah. my father's uncle, Walter, uh, with whom he was very close, was actually taken by the Nazis um, and, and killed in a concentration camp. Um, they were well educated German Jews who believed that this was not going to affect them. When we got this telephone call, we packed our bags, we left within an hour and all of our furniture, everything else, pots, pans, dishes, whatever was in the kitchen, we left behind. And uh, we never Just went like back. Just like that, we thought any minute they're gonna stop never the went cars back. and send us off to concentration camp. A new law came out that German uh, Aryans were not to go to uh, Jewish physicians or not be treated by Jewish physicians anymore. And then my father realized that the time is up and he should better start looking around for another country to take him. Imagine having to just pack everything up and leave you with the It was a bit exciting for me. It was sort of an adventure. And I felt somewhat secure. I had my brother there. I had my parents there. I know I was going to a new country, but it was somewhat exciting. I had no idea of any Philippine involvement in this. We learn it in school in the UK, but pretty much just like European yeah, it was side of it. Was it? No. Quezon, like most Filipinos, was Catholic. And yet he developed an affinity for Jews because he felt that there was a sort of a symbolic brotherhood between, between Filipinos and Jews. That is, that as the Filipinos were, were the recipients of racial discrimination and bigotry on the part of many Americans at that time, that the Jews were similarly the recipients of, of bigotry by the Nazis. And so okay. even though Quezon had extremely important and critical political and economic issues to wrestle with at this time, he was willing to take a stand to help the Jews. Wow. Well, My coming to get father Amazing. applied yeah to the Philippines, but didn't know at all where it was, what it was, all he wow. knew was, yeah, was somewhere in the Pacific. Yeah, I guess that's true. So he looked up his encyclopedia, uh, which was published in 1898, we found out later. And um, he wow. read that this was a, uh, an island discovered, uh, or a set of islands, 7,000 islands discovered by Magellan. Uh, it's under the Spanish crown. Spanish was the national language. So naturally, we immediately started studying Spanish. When we got mm. to the Philippines and we're staying really in a boarding house where there are all that. sorts of different pe yeah. people, uh, Filipinos, mestizos, Stay Caucasians, well. etc. I didn't never made, to me, there was never any distinction. To me, they were all people. And to this day, I feel that way. But uh, it was never a distinction to me. And I was very impressed because we wow. rode up the boulevard footage. into Pasay and wow. the lovely beach, lovely beaches, uh, beautiful uh, the banana trees, and uh, there were the, the polo grounds, I remember. I had One no of the idea things we happened. did fairly no often to the was go to the movies. That. And there were 
uh, half a dozen good movie theaters in the Philippines. The Lyric, mm -hmm. the Ideal, the Gaiety People Theater. People didn't travel much I would then, say no, no, we no, probably no went much. to the movies maybe once like, every couple of weeks. People didn't even go to the movies. Like, no, exactly. Mostly Sipa. Sipa is, uh, it's a uh, metal, it's a round metal thing with uh, strips of, of uh, paper, I believe, and you kick it with your leg. And the one who could kick it the most, of course, was the winner. When you saw how the doors were basically closed to all of us, except the Philippines, and how the that's Filipino crazy. people are a very warm people. They're a very yeah, friendly. Yeah, that's true, even back then. Yeah. We learned Filipino songs, and um, there were quite a few performances. Art was very important. And Filipinos have very, very good voices. My father spoke often of his Filipino friends and recounted things that were these small moments, but clearly moments that for him were all about friendship and happiness and something that was very uh, lighthearted. You know, that still comes through, isn't it? That's what we say. As we were sleeping in the middle of the night, the house was shaking as if there was an earthquake. Everybody woke up. So we ran outside and stood in the street while the houses were shaking. But there were these large booms, booms, booms. Uh, it turned out that we were being bombarded by the Japanese. We had daily air raids. They were awful. That's so sad. Yeah, I've never seen footage like this from no. the Philippines. It was groups of four, four, and four, which you could barely see. Uh, exceedingly well trained. And, of course, they bombed at random and it was a very frightening experience. Shortly thereafter, all of our friends that were either American, Canadian, British, or French, <coughs> which were the allies, enemies of the Japanese, uh, were rounded up by the Japanese and interred at Santa Tomas. The irony of this is that these refugee Jews from Germany and Austria who had passports identifying them as German Jews are not arrested by the Japanese. The Japanese don't care if they're Jewish. They have a German passport. That means that they are an ally and they are not arrested, uh, and they are not this weird bubble. incarcerated. Wow. Mm. It is, yeah. I, I really did not want to leave. That was my home. That was all I, that I knew. I was there from the time I was seven. I was there for almost nine years. Wow, so she and, grew and that up was there. my home. Wow. For me, the Philippines, uh, it may not be my motherland, but my adopted motherland because if it had not been for it, I would not be the person that I am now. Roosevelt and Churchill 
saved Western civilization. But Quezon, and so few people know that, President Quezon of the Philippines, yeah. saved 1,200 Jewish souls, as many as Schindler, maybe even more. And, Never and knew that, that is the, the epitome, basically, of Judaism. It says if you save one soul, you save mankind. Wow. So I'm guessing that's part of a longer documentary or film. So interesting. I'm shocked that we didn't know that already and that we weren't taught that, that in school. Yeah. That amazing story. And so, so interesting. Oh, you could talk for hours on how, you know, the war and everything and how wrong that everything to do with that was and everything. But um, yeah, okay. Thanks for recommending that. That yeah. was very, very interesting. I think it's really important to remember history and be reminded of history and to learn more we've learned something today yeah, and it's really nice like emotional video um listening to the stories of people that have gone through this directly and having the actual yeah. people and how they feel about the philippines now and what the country and what exactly the did for them at the time is amazing and in such a horrible situation yeah. that's a glimmer of something, something nice that happened and these yeah. people were saved from what could have been really really bad so yeah, thanks for watching that with us. Uh, we hope to come back for the next video on the channel. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it today and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.